So I woke up today to a bunch of messages asking, are we going to talk about coronavirus? And I suppose the answer is yes, we are. I'm Mike Wagenbush, this is Till We Make It, and today we're talking about coronavirus, or COVID-19. What is it? Where did it come from? What are the symptoms? Who is at risk? How can we protect ourselves and others? And why has it been labeled a pandemic by the World Health Organization? Yeah, believe it or not, we're going to talk about all of that here on this channel. And this is way bigger than just the world of professional wrestling, but it impacts us all. And if it's something you've not yet heard about, you are about to. So what is coronavirus or COVID-19? Well, it's a viral strain that is infecting people across the globe. So in that way, it's a little like the flu. But it is also unlike the flu because coronavirus has no vaccine currently. And a vaccine is months away from being proven effective, months away from being tested, and even more months away from being mass produced. If you would like to know more about the development and the deployment of a coronavirus vaccine, you can watch a leading expert, Dr. Fauci, explain all of that in a video that I will link to right over there. So where did this come from? Well, it seems as if the initial outbreak of COVID-19 occurred in Wuhan, China. But since then, there have been outbreaks in Seattle, in Italy. Does all of this mean that you can no longer eat Chinese food or Italian food or drink coffee from Seattle? No, absolutely not, because currently there is no evidence that food is a route for transmitting COVID-19. And I will link to an article on this exact topic down below in the show notes if you'd like to read more. So how does COVID-19 get transmitted? Well, according to the CDC, they're the Center for Disease Control. You'll remember them from an episode of The X-Files. The chief route for transmitting COVID-19 is through respiratory droplets, which is exactly what we emit from our nose or mouth every time that we sneeze or cough. So what can we all do to decrease the likelihood of transmitting COVID-19? Well, some simple and obvious things. When you sneeze or cough, sneeze or cough into your elbow rather than into your hand. And if you do sneeze or cough into your hand, proceed to wash your hands immediately thereafter. More on hand washing coming in a moment. But those of us in professional wrestling know that our culture's etiquette demands we shake hands every time that we see one another. And for a while, I would like to propose that we forego this long-standing tradition in favor of something that is a little bit safer, the Misawa elbow. Just reach out and give somebody an elbow, and they will reciprocate by sticking out their elbow. And if for some reason they no-sell the Misawa elbow, proceed directly to the Tiger Driver. You may know that inside respiratory droplets, COVID-19 can stay alive on certain surfaces for up to three days. And one of those surfaces happens to be glass. So consider regularly wiping down things like countertops, sink fixtures, or your mobile device with something like a disinfectant wipe on the regular. This will help ensure that you keep things as sanitary as possible. Since I got this wipe out, I figured I'd just do it right now. You don't have to watch this part. It smells nice. Now you may have heard that as of March 11th, COVID-19 has been labeled a pandemic by the World Health Organization. That's the WHO, not to be confused with a classic rock band, which is the bane of every CSI fan's existence. A pandemic is a real term, and it means a disease that is spreading globally throughout multiple countries at the same time. And as of this recording, there are confirmed cases of COVID-19 in 118 countries. I'm going to link above to a video on this exact topic if you'd like to know more. All right, so how can we identify the symptoms of COVID-19? Well, they are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. And if you are experiencing those symptoms, your first move should be to call your doctor. You can also try exercising self-quarantine. That means that you're going to stay at home and try to maintain a safe distance of about six feet from other people. Unfortunately, symptoms of COVID-19 can take up to two weeks to surface, and it's for this reason that some people are taking extra precautions, like 
more regular washing of hands, sanitizing of hands, and some people are even taking the extra step of wearing face masks to contain their respiratory droplets. And to exercise caution at an even higher level, you could consider avoiding using public transportation or attending large public events. Related to that, here in the United States, the states of Washington and Oregon have already prohibited any public gatherings larger than 250 people in an effort to reduce the spread of COVID-19. So what can you do to protect yourself from COVID-19? Well, they are fairly mundane things like washing your hands with warm water for up to 20 seconds, making sure that you cover all the surfaces of your hands, including between your fingers. You can also consider more regular application of hand sanitizer, but it's important to know you need to use a hand sanitizer that is at least 60% alcohol, and you want to continue rubbing it into your hands until your hands feel dry. Lastly, you want to avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth with unwashed hands whenever possible. And if you happen to be experiencing symptoms for COVID-19, what can you do to protect others? Well, three things that you can do. Well, the first thing that you can do is stay home and if possible, self-quarantine there. Number two, if you must go out, like for food, consider wearing a face mask to reduce the likelihood that any of your respiratory droplets could be inhaled into the lungs of another person. And number three, consider regularly wiping down commonly used surfaces with disinfectant wipes. Think of things like keyboards, light switches, doorknobs, or toilet handles. So if you're hearing all of this and you're wondering, who is at risk for COVID-19? Well, the answer, unfortunately, is we all are. Now, does this mean that you need to go and sequester yourself in your dad's old apocalypse readiness bunker? No, it doesn't. But it is important to understand that there are people who are of a higher risk than others, and they will require even greater care from us, like people who have developing immune systems or weakening immune systems, like the very young and the very old. Additionally, the immunocompromised are also high risk for COVID-19. And if you're hearing that word, immunocompromised, and wondering, what does that mean? I want you to know, I wondered the same thing. So I had to look it up. And people who are immunocompromised include those suffering from HIV AIDS, because their immune system has been compromised by those diseases, or organ transplant patients, or cancer treatment patients who take certain medicines which are immunosuppressive and therefore compromise their immune system. If you're looking for more detailed information on this or the way in which congenital diseases passed down through generations of families can compromise your immune system, I am linking down below to a resource from the Center for Disease Control. No matter what the situation is, whether it's the COVID-19 pandemic or it's something else, responding from a place of fear or indulging in panic or hysteria helps no one. COVID-19 is not the end of the world, but it is more serious than when Sean put Marty through the barbershop window. If we're all taking extra measures, being super vigilant and acting responsibly, we can help slow down the spread of the coronavirus. And this will only aid an overburdened healthcare system as a vaccine is formulated, tested, and distributed. Together, we can slow down the spread of coronavirus. And as an additional note to some of the people that reached out to me this morning on this very topic, for clear and dependable updates, turn to leaders in science and medicine before you turn to politicians. Asking a politician for insight on the spread of viral disease is like asking your pizza delivery guy to explain your car's transmission. Turn to the experts. That's where I got all the information in today's video. Whether you're just learning about all of this today or you've been following this story for several weeks, I don't doubt there's probably been at least one moment where you've begun to feel a little bit frightened by all of this that is going on in our world right now. And you know, there is no better remedy for the things that make us feel frightened or fearful than knowledge. And I appreciate that you came here looking for some of it. Whether or not you've been with me since the very beginning or you're just joining me today, I want you to know, I think people who are always seeking more knowledge, looking to improve themselves as people and as performers, 
I think those people are awesome. I think that attitude is awesome. And I'm glad to have you here with me. You keep on being awesome. I will keep on making the videos. Together, we will keep on faking it.